Oh, hi. Good morning. It's Henry. I'm Mowers and Blowers. Beautiful day out today. Uh, it's only about 10 in the morning, and I woke up like an hour ago. Uh, I can tell that it's a beautiful morning because while I do have a, a light jacket on underneath and this jacket, right, it's very pleasant. And I know that uh, in a couple of hours, it'll be nice and warm, and uh, it'll be a great day for doing whatever I do. You know, we'll, we'll see what the day brings. You know, I've got um, no plans today other than the fact that maybe three people want to come see tractors. But in my uh, experience, when they say they're going to come, the probability that they're going to come is probably pretty scarce. People are very flaky. You know what I mean? You can kind of tell who really wants it and who really is just kicking the tires, you know? Anyway, uh, while I'm waiting for the next bite, and I think some dude does want to come and uh, not come here, but meet me somewhere to go look at my beige Craftsman, the, the high wheel um, junk mower that I fixed. It has a Tecumseh engine on it. So honestly, whatever I get for it, I am more than happy to get something for it, right? I hate the Tecumseh engines. But this one does start up very well, and the front self-propulsion does work. So uh, I have it listed for a hundred bucks, and a guy offered me eighty, and I'm like, bet. So uh, he says he's gonna come around eleven thirty. It's about ten thirty now. We'll see what happens. Anyway, as you guys know, in uh, the end of yesterday's video, I went to go visit my friend Nick from Medford, and uh, he gave me a bunch of stuff. I brought him a little bit of Lucas oil. Uh, I'm gonna bring him some more next time because every time I go over there, he gives me a lot of stuff. Uh, the stuff he was going to throw out. Can you believe that? I just can't stand it when he wants to throw things out because to me, it's worth money in some way. You know, to him, he just wants to get rid of the stuff, get a tractor made and sell it. I really should try to adopt his type of uh, selling because he's been, he's been a beast in terms of selling tractors. I mean, that guy makes like, he makes a lot. <laughs> I don't want to reveal what he makes, but he does very well. But he'll buy tractors from 100 bucks to 400 bucks, but they're all in very good condition, so he has to do minimal work to it. Uh, the most he does is he does do swap roos. You know, he rips an engine out of one cheap one, puts it in another one that uh, needs an engine. You know, and he's got this um, secret sauce mixture that he makes and he sprays all over the tractor. I swear, all his tractors look like brand spanking new, so he gets top dollar for them. And he won't tell any of us, you know, Larry, none of us, what the potion is. I know there's WD-40 in it, but he puts like two other things in it and he refuses to tell me what it is. It drives me crazy. Anyway, so he gave me these Murray bins, right? Uh, it didn't fit on any of his tractors, so uh, he was gonna throw them out. And I said, well, I'll take them, you know. Um, it's for a Murray. That's right, the same Murray Black Beauty I have in my mom's house. And uh, the bagger I have for that, same thing, is uh, probably 20 years old. So these will be good backups, for sure. Uh, in addition, he also gave me uh, a starter. He says it's broken. I can tell you, I can tell you right away what, what's wrong with it. One of the magnets is busted inside. So when a magnet is busted inside, you're not gonna be able to turn this because the magnets are adhering to the coil inside and it's, it's not turning. The magnet has come loose from this housing. But I bet you it still works. Has a good metal green gear. And what happens is uh, if you drop it, it breaks the magnet, that's it. So I can probably fix that, find a magnet somewhere, glue it. Aha. Uh -huh. These are 12 inch wheel weights. Uh, he got them through a trade or something like that, or it came on one of his tractors that he sold. Anyway, um, when I got my GT6000, you know, the Blue Bayou, it has 12-inch big tractor rims on the back, right? And it came with 8-inch uh, wheel weights for a snowplow or whatever. And so they won't fit on there. They'll fit on a conventional 8-inch lawn tractor rear wheel, which I have, but I have it fabricated on a rear bracket somehow, you know? So I always wanted the 12 inch one, he had them. So I'm just gonna give him my eight inches next time I see him. 
and he gave me these 12s, and I'll install these. If I have time, maybe I'll bring the Blue Bayou out, huh? Yeah, so I got these wheel weights. I'm just going to unload all this stuff. I've got a power no more from Zhongshan engine with a blown connecting rod. I always sell good parts on those uh, on eBay. I got a Kohler Courage, 18 horsepower. What else could be wrong with it? That's right, a blown connecting rod. Kohler Courage, infamous for blowing. So, I mean, I could sell some parts off of it. Not a lot, you know, some parts. Uh... Got a couple of rims, a couple of seats. I'm just gonna unload this so I can meet this guy. I gotta unload this so I can meet this guy. So I just got back from selling that mower and uh, just as I was driving home, somebody else texted me and saying that they wanted to buy a mower. So I've got three left, that's it. Three mowers left to sell and uh, she wants one of them. So I have to leave pretty soon. Uh, at the same time, uh, Mike from Mike's Lawn Care, the kid that uh, used to get me mowers and stuff a few years back, he needs some wheels. So I'm just having him come over and look my back shed through all my wheels and he could have whatever he wants. Uh, Finally gonna show this Toro because I've got like 40 people waiting for that stupid idiot who, uh, you know, made me waste a whole week holding on to this and telling people it was pending. But finally, I'm gonna start selling this thing now. Uh, I think I have it for too cheap, 375. It's got that steering issue still though, but uh, other than that, everything works, you know? I may just need a new battery is all. This thing's beautiful. This thing I have for 675. I have some guy maybe coming later to look at it too. So who knows, maybe I'll sell two tractors today, huh? Uh, in the meantime, gotta go sell another mower. Another busy day here at Mowers and Bluers. Oh, by the way, so uh, my cousin, Hank the Asian Redneck, you guys have really been helping me out uh, subscribing to his channel. Um, I think he's at 78 subscribers already from 37 just a couple of days ago. So thank you guys very much uh, for, for um, subscribing to my cousin's channel. He's a good kid. Um, his channel is, uh, the link to his channel is in my description of this video. So. Da, 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 da. That's right, fellas. I whipped out the blue bayou. That's something else, huh? I've never used it before. <laughs> the only time I've ever driven this thing is when I first got the engine in there. Uh, tire chains, brand new, never been scraped. This is the first time it's hit like asphalt, you know? Plow, never used it. No snow, what are you gonna do? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this thing. You know, it's so beautiful and stuff, but I mean, should I sell it or? I don't know if I'm going to get any snow out of this thing, you know what I mean? Uh, but um, today I'm going to take off this thing, I'm, I'll have to show you. I've got this uh, like rigged, um, rigged wheel weights. Like I said, these have these massive 12 inch rims, right? I think the tires are 21s or something, or 23s. Yeah, 23 inch tires. Um, what's it say there? 10.5. Yeah, 10.5 12s. So, so it's got 23 inch wheels, uh, tires, on a 12.5, 10.5 uh, width, right? On a 12 inch rim. The white thing is the rim. And so I had these 8 inch wheel weights, right? And it wouldn't fit on there. So I fabricated these brackets, see? And just put on the 8 inch uh, wheel weights. Um, so Nick gave me the 12-inch ones from uh, purchase or something. He can't use them because he doesn't, 
he doesn't have one that has uh, 12 inches. So I'm going to give him those eights when I see him next. That's what I'm going to do later after I sell this mower. So I just got finished selling that other one. This is the parking lot that I meet people at. It's at a church parking lot. It's a pretty big parking lot. It's where my son learned how to uh, drive. Anyway, I got rid of it for 60 bucks. Um, you know, it's ragged, it's old, but 60 bucks is 60 bucks, you know? As you saw, I managed to get the wheel weights on there. They were a little bit off because I, I noticed that there was no holes in the rim for me to put them on. The only holes that were near there were the lug nut holes. But they weren't exactly 180 degrees in a straight line like that, like this is. See how it's 180 degrees? Like that was, one was there and the other one was like over here, you know what I mean? Whatever, it, it's on here, you know what I mean? It's on there really well, too. So then I removed the bracket, the ridiculous looking bracket that I had. <clears throat> and uh, I don't even know what that bracket is. It looked like some kind of a front tractor plow bracket or something. I don't remember where I got it from, but it worked, you know? So I got those uh, eight inch wheel weights for uh, Nick next time I see him. But I've got these 12s on here now, so I've got, I've got it all set up. Um, I have this one over here, the uh, Craftsman uh, Tractor LT1000, the gray one that I got from uh, Mondo Mowers. It's the third one out of the seven that I got from him. I think it runs great. I got it listed for $675. Some local nut is going to come look at it. Um, I think he wants it delivered. I didn't get my ramps yet from Harbor Freight Tools, so I don't know how I'm going to deliver it, but he's going to come and check it out anyway. He sounds like an old man, you know? Anyway, he, the reason why he wants to buy it is because his old LT1000 that he's had for 20 years, he says that the, his transmission is going, like his third gear is going. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have another transmission. But anyway, uh, as a delivery fee, I told him I would take his LT1000 as a delivery fee. We'll see what happens, you know, but I, I really can't deliver it right now because I don't have any ramps. Harbor Freight Tools has taken a long time to deliver them. Well, guess what? I don't know how much you're going to see, but it looks like my battery's about to die. So I'm going to try to start it up while I have you, while I have the battery on. <clears throat> oh, son of a gun. I can't start it up. You know why? Remember, I took the battery out of here to try to put into another mower. So there's no battery in here. I can't start it up. Oh, well. Next time. So this is what happened. The guy that was gonna come and look up my gray one, he was, I gave him the address, he was about to come, and then his wife says, 
Where are you going? I'm going to go buy a tractor. He goes, no, you're not. What if you get coronavirus? He's like, I'm not getting coronavirus. He's just leaving it on the driveway. I'm going to go check it out. And if he wants, he'll deliver it later. He's like, no, you're not going anywhere. So he texts me and he says, Henry, I'm sorry, but the wife put the kibosh on the whole idea. So I'm sorry for wasting your time. I'm like, listen, I'm married. I have a wife. I understand exactly how that is, you know what I mean? And then the other guy made up some lame excuse like, oh, I got a, I got a nail in my trailer, so it's got a flat. I don't know why I just did a British accent, I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, so see, two guys say that they're gonna come, never come, flakes. But in my business, I'm sorry, my hobby, you're so used to it, you brush it right off. And um, the other guy that was supposed to buy the Troy bill for 300 never called me. So I'm not going to call him. If he wants it, he knows where to come and get it, right? I'm not going to go chase anybody. If they want it, I've got it. If they don't want it, don't call me, you know? Um, so, another, uh, so tomorrow's another day. I'm sure I'll eventually sell some tractors, but it's still a good day today because I sold two lawnmowers. Man, oh man. I've got only two lawnmowers left in my van. That thing was stacked with like six or seven of them. So I'm glad that I'm trying to get rid of all my uh, lawnmowers. But, uh, so look, the only thing that has, uh, this thing has problems with is, I feel like the starter goes really slow. You know what I mean? I want to kind of see if I change the battery on it to a new battery, whether or not it'll crank better. And maybe I'll fix that starter and put the, another starter in here. This starter is a little bit different than your typical Briggs one. I know it's a Briggs one, but it's, so, it's, it's an older style. The newer one has the gold backing and the top is just a flat, you know, it's got the ring gear and then it's flat. This one's got the ring gear and then it has a spring and it protrudes upward, has like a stub on the top. And I remember that all the Toros, the, uh, the wheel horse ones, has those starters and it always just turns slowly, you know? I feel like this would start a lot easier if it had a fresh battery in it and one of those other kind of starters. So instead of me putting this back in the yard, I think I'm gonna change the starter tomorrow and put in a, a fresh new battery, the one I got from Advance Auto Parts. That's what I'll do. So today went by, I don't know, two hours charging the battery. And uh, while we were uh, charging the battery, my son's car had a shattered windshield. It's not shattered, but it had like a pebble that hit it or something like that. And it just spread out, the crack spread. So his windshield cracked. And then, it, then the car wouldn't start because he hasn't driven in months, you know what I mean? So the battery died. So I jumped it. Runs good now, but it has a crack in the windshield. But you know, he, he never drives it anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. I'm not gonna go spend $300 on a new windshield, you know what I mean? Um, we can't claim it with our insurance company because he has only liability insurance on that car. You only get that benefit for comprehensive, which I have on the other cars. So uh, I guess the windshield is just gonna be busted for a while. Uh, anyhow, so I'm gonna back this baby in. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to try starting this, right? And you're going to see how slow it starts. But I feel like it'll start well if it had a fresh battery in it. Watch. Okay, you're a part of the show. Come on, don't you want to say hello? Would you say hello? Just say hello. Oh, for God's sakes. As I'm putting that tractor away, my neighbor walks over, you know, Andy, from across the street. He's from the UK, you know. Hey, Andy Garvey, I've got one of your countrymen with me. Anyway, he brings over this thing, right? 
It's a home light leaf uh, mulcher, right? Leaf vac blower. Anyway, he got this in Christmas, right? And he was just using it. Wait, you were using it? So he was using it, and then I guess he shut it off, and then he tried to pull it back on again, and the whole string just came out like this. And it won't go back in, right? So it's a recoil starter, right? So uh, he, he took it off here, and it's got like this nut. So I got my impact, one inch, right? And it comes off this way. Right? Down. Down. And so you can't do anything here. But it looks like you got a quarter inch impact bits that go all the way in. One, two, three, four, five. Take that off, which removes this red housing from basically the base of where the engine lays. And I think that way we'll be able to see whether or not the recoil has like dust, debris, because he uses it for mulching too. He sucks up crap. You can tell crap has been sucked up through here. So the crap is gonna, sawdust and stuff is gonna get through these vents, see? And it's gonna dirty up your coil. I'm pretty sure that's it. He just has to clean that coil out, you know, and oil it with some Earl. But uh, I don't think I wanna do it. I've got enough on my hands for me to do, but I'm showing Andy over here, he doesn't want to be on camera, I don't know why, you know. You British people are not really known to be, you know, timid, you know. Anyway, um, so I think that's it, but problem is though, he's going to have to get some uh, nut drivers, you know, the screwdriver type long ones, because even an impact's not going to not gonna reach down there, you know what I mean? Because even the bit is not going to fit in this hole. So I don't know how you're going to be able to get that out there. You know what? I think they're Torx. Maybe, let me go get Torx. <laughs> so you see what I mean? I bet you some of you guys are just like me. Your entire neighborhood comes out and whenever they need something in terms of that, they come and look for you for problems, you know? And uh, while I'd like to help him out, uh, that's not really that easy to work out, I don't think, you know, in five minutes or something. You're really going to have to spend some time and research that and <laughs> kind of hope that when you take that apart, the coil is out like that. And how does that sound go again? Like that and uh, you won't be able to put it back together again, not to mention the fact it's not mine. You know what I mean? If it's not mine, I feel like if I started messing with it and I f screw it all up, right, I kind of feel responsible. You know what I mean? That's why I don't want to... That's why I don't like working on other people's stuff. I'll show you how to do it yourself, but you're going to have to try it, you know? And so I just told him what to do, you know? You can figure it out, man. At least he'll have, he'll have something to do during the quarantine, you know? Oh, anyway, so the reason why the day went by like that because my friend Andy from Jericho, you know, like my best friend, he, uh, the guy I go on vacation with to Canada, eh? You know, he came by, they went out for a drive because they were going bat crazy in their house, you know? There was nothing to do. It was a beautiful day today. Uh, remember, today is a beautiful day. But the following days are going to be crappy is what I hear. So I'm not going to be doing anything outdoors. I'm probably not going to be selling any tractors. Because if it's lousy outside, I'm not schlepping my ass out there all day in the mud and all that stuff. And I say mud because my lawn is muddy when it rains. Because the grass doesn't grow. I ordered two bags of malorganite fertilizer. And I ordered malorganite because some of you guys told me that malorganite is organic and it's safe for your pets. My dog runs around the lawn all the time so and he eats grass so I don't want him to eat the fertilizer. So I got malorganite like you guys told me. I'm gonna put some down when uh, it gets here. I ordered it from True Value Hardware and they had delivery. It was a reasonable fee, you know what I'm saying? So I bought two five-pound bags of malorganite and I bought two 
five pound bags of 31 Kentucky high fescue. I don't know really too much about grass seed, but people told me that that's good. The 31. I've seen landscapers use it. Like the bag it says 31 on it. So anyway, I ordered those four bags and it should be coming in the next few days. So they say to put the fertilizer down first and you guys write in the comments, you landscaper guys who are experts, and I don't want to hear any comments from guys who aren't experts because if you go and comment and tell me what to do, I'm going to do it. And if I do it wrong and my grass gets all messed up, I'm blaming you. So only if you know absolutely sure what, I, what I'm supposed to do, tell me, all right? So I'm going to put the melorganite down first, especially when it's raining, right? It's good. It soaks into the ground, right? And I'll wait like two or three days and then I'm going to spread my seed. Right? Let me know what I'm going to do about that stuff. Actually, when I get it, you know, you guys can... Uh, I'm going to do it, just what you tell me, when it comes. I'll put it on video. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so my friend Andy from Jericho, he, he wanted to get out. They decided to go for a drive. He's teaching his daughter how to drive. Today wasn't a good day for her to learn how to drive because there was apparently a ton of people on the street. People were running in the park, whatever, this close, shoulder to shoulder, no masks, no gloves, nothing. You watch. Watch us get a surge of cases again. This thing's not over, man. I'm telling you, it's not over. I'd like it to be over, but I don't think it's going to be over. Not yet. Not until we find a cure, a vaccine. Oh, you're thinking, why don't we just find a vaccine? Well, I'll tell you why we can't find a vaccine. Because some, some viruses you can't cure. Look at AIDS. Yeah, we can kind of control it a little bit, but you don't, you're not really fully cured by it. That's a virus. We don't have a cure for that. We don't have a cure to cancer. We don't have a cure to ALS, uh, muscular dystrophy, polio. Uh, we have a cure for polio. Um, the thing with the sun. Um, I forget. Anyhow, so uh, he came by. Uh, they were just driving around and said, oh, you know what? We're not far away from Henry. Let's go visit them. We were on the lawn. You know, I was jumping in my son's car because it, you know, died. And... Uh, so he ended up just hanging out on my lawn for like two hours while I was waiting for these guys to come and look at the tractor, but they never showed up, you know. But at least they texted me and said they weren't coming. So anyway, that. So anyway, that's what happened today. Um, I'm happy that I sold two mowers today. Um, didn't really get much of anything else done, to be honest with you. Oh, you guys saw the blue bayou, right? I, I did get something done, you know, we put the 12-inch wheel weights on the tire, on the wheels, and uh, took the old 8 contraption off, and uh, it's great. I just, too bad, I, w I was going to go ripping around the block with that thing, but, you know, it being chains, with chains on the wheels and stuff, I don't want to rip up asphalt, and it's going to, you know, scratch my chains, you know, because it's meant to, have, you know, be running snow. I don't want to scratch up the chains, you know. Should I take the chains off, but then I have to take the plow off, and then it's nothing. It, the whole thing is just for plowing, you know. But anyway, uh, that's it for today, man. I'm going to go inside and watch some TV for a change.